Gadget UK here again, and this time we're looking at a Commodore 1541 disk drive. So um, you can see it's had a bit of knock damage this I think, I think there's been a split here, I don't know if you can just about see it, it might be part of the moulding just there, but anyway the, the label has stuck up a little bit, I'm not sure there's much we can do with that. Um, might be able to press that down, yeah it's rubber by the looks of things. So I could always reattach that, but if we look at the back end of this, it's quite heavy actually. Uh, we've got a split there, so I think before I do anything, um, I'm just looking a bit misaligned here. Uh, before I do anything, I'm probably going to get the back off and just inspect around the power supply area and just make sure nothing's smashed inside. In order to get inside this, it looks like there's just four screws um, in the corners. There we go, so the lid lifts off quite easily there. Uh, if I just clean some of these up, it's a bit mucky. That's a 7805 by the looks of things, a 5 volt regulator. Uh, 7812 so yeah I think we've got a 12 volt regulator, two regulators on here, two bridges, um, smoothing caps for the supply lines probably, you've got your serial um, daisy chain type connectors here, you know one's in one's out so you can join two drives um, together there, um, you know of a drive ID8, drive ID9, there's probably a switch or something somewhere, I don't know where, I don't know how you specify whether it's drive ID8 or 9, not sure, um, it's a long time since I've been inside one of these. Um, so what else have we got? You've got a 6522 here, um, via, which is what you get on the um, VIC-20, you know, it's the same as, it does, it performs a similar function to the 6526, the CAA, but you know, these are called VIAs. Um, so you've got one there, one there, and in the middle there's a 6502. So I'm guessing we could probably swap that out with a Rockwell 6502 if there's a problem with the CPU there. Um, not sure what this chip is here. Um, I'll uh, perhaps have a look and perhaps put some text up there or something in a minute, but yeah, on first glance, not sure. We've um, got an Oki um, RAM down here, I don't know if that's an SRAM, um, probably is, I would think, could be DRAM, um, and I think this is the ROM socketed. Um, and then just a couple support and logic chips down here, you've got one that's got Commodore on it, uh, a part number, not sure, because it's near the clock, I'm suspecting that's probably some sort of clock generation um, IC, 7406, again probably related to that clock generation I think um, and then down here we've got uh, a 7.4 LS06 a 7.4 LS14 um, so you know standard off the shelf parts in most places on this really you know you could place the 6.522's with Rockwell chips you could place the CPU you could place the ROM you could place the RAM well that might be a bit tricky trying to find one exactly the right um, size you could always adapt something similar to do the same job I'm pretty sure um, and then 74 logic so it's just this chip really and also you can see it we've got like a hybrid um, type thing here where you know they, they produce like a little PCB stick lots of components on it and use the little pin sop, um, pin header type things there you can see at that angle um, a bit like I think actually you've probably seen something similar to that not quite as big but similar assembly type on the Commodore Amigas there back on the at the back of the video um, connectivity just near Denise um, so everything's connectors in terms of joining the drive up, so that looks quite good. I can just disconnect this board. It doesn't look to be anything too sold, even the, the mains input by the looks of things. Uh, well, I'm assuming that's what that is. Yeah, um, and it just uses a standard IEC um, type mains, you know, kettle lead. So that's nice about this particular model. I think if you get some of the newer Commodore 64 disk drives, they have a, you know, like a four pin um, type connector, similar to you know something like that, but with four pins, you know, a, a DIN type. Um, so you've got to have a separate power supply and they can be quite pricey i've seen some of the power supplies for these disc drives or not this disc drive but you know the next model is up for sort of 40 50 pounds um sometimes with shipping on as well um so uh, looking at the actual mechanism here i like the way this is quite easy to work on but it looks things it's nice and exposed i think some of the models um are a lot more difficult than others and this one you know i can get easy access to the head to there to clean the heads um we can inspect various bits there's a belt and you can just about see it down there so we'll need to check that belt um, yeah it looks like it's going to be relatively easy to work on I think um, I'll perhaps lubricate some of the bits that may need lubricating like the, the guide rails where the uh, you know the head assembly slides up and down we'll get some lubrication on there um, but yeah right now I think I'm just going to take some measurements on here make sure there's no shorts or anything like that and then I'll connect the mains lead up um, and we'll power it on and see what happens so, no shorts or anything, I'm going to switch it on. Yeah, that's interesting, I'll just show you. It did spin up, just listen. 
that's good. And we can test that further, we'll switch it back off, see if we can just move this. I'm not sure whether they're going to be able to freewheel it or not. Yeah, we can slide it up there a bit. And if you just watch. Yeah, so there's certainly some something something working with regards to the logic. If we have a look at the front, let's just see. I mean, bear in mind, obviously, there's no disc in it. It's not connected to the uh, a system or anything at the moment, but we'll just see, see how that behaves from the front. Well, we'd look at certainly from this stage. It looks like it's it's certainly operational. Um, you know, there's logic there. It's initialising the drive. It's trying to scan. We'll stick a disc in just see what happens. But the green, the power light's on. Um, I think that's a good sign. Maybe we've just got a problem with one of the uh, wires or something on this. So the interesting thing here is just notice as soon as you put the disc in, just listen. Near motor, it's starting to spin there. And then it's just sat there as if it's waiting for a command. So, yeah, I think I'm going to need to connect this up to a C64. But I think before I do that, I'm going to measure the voltage just coming out of these regulators here, and we'll just, you know, we'll just do it, have a bit of a measure around, just make sure that we've got the right voltages. Yeah, so pin one's ground. Um, pin twenty is VDD. Oh, is it VCC? VCC. So uh, let's just measure across there. Yeah, I don't you can see that nice clean 4.98. Uh, well, I say clean, I need to get on the scope before I know whether that's clean or not. But it's 4.98 volts, so that's okay. Um, now, I suspect the 12 volts is there, and I'll tell you why, because the motors on this are going to be relying on the 12 volts. It wouldn't be spinning, I don't think the disc would be rotating the motor there, and the heads perhaps wouldn't be moving if there was no 12 volts. So, um, I'll have a quick look around, see if I can see any markings or anything to indicate where I could measure 12 volts from. But um, I'm going to assume that actually the power supply side of this is okay. Um, I'll perhaps proceed to connecting this up to um, my C64 here to give it a quick test to see what it's doing. So the drive's all connected up, uh, powered on the drive first, then the C64. Uh, we'll do load, star, 8.1. one. I'll point with the drive before I press return. I've just done this, I know what the result is, just listen. Yeah, this is file not found, which I'll just show you now. So I don't know whether we've got um, dirty heads, um, perhaps a prob problem with one of the ICs there buffering the data, um, or maybe even um, an alignment problem, I don't know. So it could be a pretty tricky one to resolve this, I'm not sure just yet. Um, and as you can see, the LED uh, in front there is flashing red. So um, yeah, I'll inspect a little bit. I'll probably just clean these heads up just to make sure, you know, see if that has any effect. Clean the heads up here. Um, and just retest to see what happens um, and then do, have a look at the schematics I think before I do anything else Right, well this is the following day. I spent probably an hour and a half yesterday looking at this. Um, I've not recorded everything, but I'm going to run through some things here. Um, this has driven me nuts, I'll be completely honest. Um, the first thing is the schematics are available. You can download the service manuals for these, um, but there are quite a few different revisions. Um, now, as you can see, the one I've got here is the one that's got the Neutronics Mitsumi drive, and the board I've got is a 581854. Did I get that right? Sorry, the 251854. Um, and the, I can't find a, a, an exact set of schematics for that that covers this particular um, chip here. You know, it's like a, a, a GAL, effectively, you know, a, a PLA type thing going on there, I think. Um, it might, I think it may even be um, the. Um, Contains some of the control circuitry for the drive, you know, perhaps some of the read and write logic and stuff. Um, that connects to the CIAs. I'm pretty sure that's what that is, but I can't find a pinout for this chip. Um, trying to find a spare for that's hard. I did find one. It was about 30 quid, I think, from Germany. Um, and the other thing that was on my mind is perhaps there was something wrong in here. Now I don't. I can't remember what I've shown, but basically, no matter what I did, it was coming up with um, a 74, you know, error, um, zero, zero, you know, just nothing. Nothing's like you can't read anything. You try formatting a disk, the head was moving all the way along. 
um, and then it would come back, do a little bit sort of around track 18, I think, and then just come up with the same error, 7400. It's like it wasn't reading anything whatsoever. So the other thing I did, which was totally unrelated really, and I, I knew it was at the time I swapped these out, but it was a last ditched attempt, and that was to swap um, these, you know, to socket these two chips and just swap them out, just make sure it's not an issue. But these are on the input, uh, well, the I/O side of things, you know, from between the drive and the C64, as far as I can gather. So it's going to have no bearing anyway, because th th it's, re it's receiving commands. You know, when you do, when I did say a format command, you know, the head would start sort of going, do, 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 you know, moving up the disc through the different tracks and then back, and then doing something with the file allocation table perhaps somewhere around track 18 or something and I you know run through all this, this, the, the typical things things are described from the start like checking the, the supply that was all okay um, I've had the scope onto this as you can see if, uh, you know I was looking at, uh, initially at the clock some of the clock stuff up here that was all all right um, the CPU is cle clearly getting a clock anyway because you know I don't know if you're aware the way this works it kind of works it's like a little system in its own right you've got the CPU here which runs code from the ROM uh, you know, bootstraps from the ROM, um, and then you've got uh, some RAM here, I think it's SRAM, which uses the stack area and some buffering, um, and then you've got your 6522 VIAs, one is primarily for your I.O. stuff, and I think there's a relationship to these chips here, I.O. signals from the C64 probably coming through here, indirectly into the, the 6522, and then I think the other 6522 is used to integrate, you know, to uh, uh, communicate between the, the CPU this GAL, um, you know, array type logic, um, you know, with the control inside of the mechanics, you know, it's like an interface there between, you know, let's say the CPU, CIA, and uh, this chip. Um, now, this chip I couldn't find any anything for. Um, the schematics don't cover the board revision I've got, 251854, so the, the core logic is uh, the same between all different revisions but then there's an awful lot less chips on this particular um, revision board and I think it's because a lot of it's merged with this chip here um, it could even be with you know some of it merged with this I've got no, no idea um, and again no pinouts for, for that either so it was proven very difficult to find the cause of the fault and what was happening 74 I was getting a 74 read error you know if you try and read a disk you know it's like uh, device not ready or whatever you know this um, not ready error I think it was um, 74 would always be the code at the, the beginning you know I've tried using the um, show you if I'll boot the C64 and we're going to fast load sorry the fan is a bit noisy on this it's been in storage for a while um, if I do a format there and press A give it a disk number uh, I'll show you the drive you can see it moving away there up the tracks. Now that was this was occurring before it would do this. So like the the drive logic was all okay. That it was trying to write, but I don't think it was reading. Um, if I show you the results, there we've got an error actually now. 27 read error. So I do think there's an alignment issue still with this potentially. Could even be the RPM of the the drive. But I am actually getting response there. And actually, about 70% of the time you can format a disk reliably and then boot. Um, you know, take the drive, disk out the drive, put the disk back in, and actually read it without an issue so I've made significant progress um, and cleaning up cleaning the drive and demagnetizing it was what was required strangely enough um, I'll show you I just got my demagnetizer out of storage that I've not used in a long while and it corroded um, and the button inside it's like a little copper plate that you push down with a you know this plastic button on the outside it pushes the copper button down on the inside and it makes the live contact connect to the you know the the, the transformer the little coil inside there so it, it's lethal really it's just I can't believe the design um, and it had a 13 amp fuse in the plug as well so I've changed that for a 3 amp permanently wired it on um, and then just use this the switch at the main socket there to you know engage, uh, engage or disengage this and all you do is you know you, you put this over the top of the heads and you can feel it vibrate a little bit from the magnetic field that's generated off this and you just move it around in circles for several seconds you know start to pull it away after about 10 seconds I booted it and then suddenly re I was actually getting something back it wasn't just 7400 every single time it was starting to be able to read the disc so the final thing I did is um, clean this whole area should be doing this while it's off really clean this whole area here with isoprop and cotton buds not just the fascia you know the surface of the head there but all around the outside and it was brown 
stuff come off you know the whole lot it was very brown that whole area um, I think the magnetic media you know the particles must have just worn off over the years not just gone on the head but all around the outside the, the, on the plastic part and I think that was all affecting the uh, it must have been must have been affecting the head because I was hardly getting anything but now like I say, after doing those two things I've got a lot of life out of this before it was doing nothing uh, you know, for all of yesterday and the first couple of hours of this morning, just nothing at all. Doesn't matter what I did to it. Um, so it's very interesting. So the other thing I did, and I highly recommend it if you've got a problem with one of these, is to check the windings on the head here. You know, put your multimeter across the various contacts, measure in resistance mode, um, and just make sure you've not got uh, you know uh, open circuit. Um, read heads or right heads etc and that, you know in my case that wasn't you know they were fine they were fine they were fine right from the start um, and that was one of the reasons why I didn't sort of rush back and clean you know spend a lot of time cleaning the heads because as far as I was concerned I cleaned it a couple of times then measured the coils they're all alright as far as I was concerned the heads were okay and they were not part of the problem I was actually convinced this morning that the part that drives the heads was the issue and in fact looking at the schematics there's um, a protection mechanism there to stop the drive being able to write on power off and power on and stuff you know when you, you've got some, you know your power levels are changing uh, and I think it's the 12 volt VF I think it's called line um, and it's a bit hard to find where that is on this model because on the schematics it talks about I think it was like Q four and q5 i think a part of that circuit well there's no q4 and q5 on here um uh, so i spent a bit of time with that as well trying to work trying to make sense of maybe that was something to do with the problem um it must be down in this area here um it must be these two transistors i'm not sure it was i, I couldn't really make sense in, enough really without proper schematics to work out whether this board has that and whether it's handled in this area down here i think it probably is um but anyway yeah after lots of tinkering like i say it's ironic isn't it the final thing just before i was about to give up was to demagnetize the head there um, and not only that you know that that brought it back to life because there was no life at all until i demagnetized it and then cleaned the whole uh, whole area around the head not just the, the surface of the head um, and that made a significant difference so i'm you know like i say i'm now at the point where i can format um, more than 50% of the time um, I'm just not sure you know whether it just needs a bit more cleaning do I need to give it another blast with the demagnetizer I should give that another try is it the disc because this is the only disc I've got to test with I've got some more discs coming on the way um, it's very difficult to tell and I guess uh, you know it'd be useful for me to test this with some uh, original discs and things just to see what the alignment's like see what happens there now we're going to get an error yeah 27 error 1800 so i might just give that another clean um, i'll perhaps report back in a few minutes uh, when i've had more time to play around with this now um, and perhaps show you when some more discs and things arrive and see what progress i can make so here's a bit of progress i'm really sorry about that fan in the c64 i knew it was a bad idea when i stuck it in there it keeps it cool but just because i've not used it in a while the bearings dry out and it just starts to sound like a dying power supply Basically, so anyway, I need to oil it, get a tiny bit of oil in that, I'll do that in a minute just to shut the damn thing up. But as you can see, I formatted the disc there, I'll take the disc out, stick the disc back in again, close the drive, F5, format, give it a name, 1, let's give it disc number 8, turn, uh, and I'll show you here. See, it's formatting away. And I've just done this four times in a row after cleaning the heads one final time with some. IPA and as you can see that's worked fine so it does appear to be all related to just mag you know magnet particles of magnetic uh, mean you know the media there um, on the surrounding area not just on the head when I cleaned this this last time like I say I focused primarily on all of the assembly rather than the head itself and that's made it, it seems to have fixed it um, just not what I expected at all um, so, I mean, it's worth pointing out a few other things with this as well, you know. Uh, switch that C64 off to shut the damn thing up. Um, it's a Mitsumi, you know, it's a Neutronics Mitsumi model, this. Um, and one of the interesting things with this, I was reading in the manual, it said about Jet Jumper 4, it says if you use the Mitsumi drive, the Neutronics drive, with, a, you know, a specific drive assembly, you've got to put Jumper 3 enabled, which disables... Um, and this is the other interesting thing, I, I'm stepping ahead of myself here, You've got to have Jumper 3 set for this drive, so I, I looked around, couldn't find Jumper 3. And then just before I managed to get this working, I just don't know if you can spot, just down here, 
I found jumper 3, uh, J3, uh, down here. A couple of pads ran as the connector. And I thought, well, let's just see. how it Because I wondered if someone had swapped this out. Maybe this had an Alps drive and someone had put, uh, you know, a, a Mitsumi drive in here, not changed the jumper and just, you know, stuck it all together and bundled it up as a job lot or something, you know, for someone to like me to fix. So anyway, I sold a JP, that J3. And the effect that has, it disables this sensor. Can you see down here? We've got like a, a photo sensor. Um, let's see if I can point them at the uh, probe. Um, this plastic arm here, um, just here, this extends and obviously goes into there, um, to, you know, to the sensor. So it knows where track zero is. Now, if you have JP3, uh, J, not JP3, J3 set, and you switch it on, instead of it stopping silently like it normally does when it reaches track zero, it does the head grinding thing, you know, it, it bangs onto this, you know, and does it, you know, it must hit it at least four, to, three or four times by the sounds of things. Still seem to work, but, you know, so for the moment I've reverted it back, I've unsoldered J, J3, just as it was when I received it, and it's gone back to using this sensor here, and it seems to work. But I just thought I'd point that out, it's just really weird how you've got the ability to disable this if you want and rely on the banging uh, scenario there um, which is, seems a bit brutal to me I wouldn't like to leave you know if you can use a sensor like that better off using it really it's going to be fairly accurate I would think compared to the whole thing you know the, the, the assembly there just banging uh, vigorously against this until it's deterred, you know it's realized that actually it must be a track zero um, and then I think this down here is the speed control now, one of the very first things I did do is I did tinker with this, but before I did that, I made a note of the resistance and measured it underneath and wrote that down. And it's back now exactly, it's exactly the same value, exactly to the ohm of what it was. So it might not be optimally configured in terms of speed. This I, I, I perhaps get hold, I need to get hold of um, a, um, one of the uh, alignment discs, I think, and I think that they probably provide two different things one of them is obviously it helps you with the track alignment it'll tell you whether it's optimal or whether it's you know you just an approximate sort of area etc so you can i think you tweak the position of this motor down here um it might not be the same on all models i don't know but i think you tweak the position of this motor and you just adjust it slightly um it might not be this one actually it might be the um the one over here i'm not sure um, and it's going to vary between models, I think. Um, but also, you could adjust this to get the RPM uh, to 300. It's got to be 300 RPM exact. Um, so, I'm not sure. The other thing you might be able to do is, I'm not sure whether there's some sort of pulse or something you might be able to detect on, the, on one of the pins on here or something. You might be able to, if you've got like a frequency counter or something on your scope, you might be able to monitor that and determine the RPM from a fr you know from there on a frequency counter on your scope like I say um, I'm not going to be able to do that on this scope um, so I'm not sure how I'm going to do that um, just yet but I might just see if I can do it in software you know get get hold of a, an alignment disc um, and I'll perhaps do another part to this video and you know if it needs a realign I might just show it anyway even if it doesn't need alignment or the RPM doesn't need adjusted but yeah that might be a subsequent video um, but right now uh, I'm just going to continue just playing around with this I think what I might try and do is write a disc image you know a D64 image to this disc and have a play um, you know play a game from it from a period of time and just see how reliable it is so here's another one of the quick tests I've been doing and that's using Maverick here to copy from the SD to IEC, which you can see is connected, uh, I've got that as device 9 um, and the 1541 is device 8, so you can see that's writing, it's writing now and the head um, is every now and again moving as it changes track. So once this is completed uh, I'll give it a test, see if it can load that software from the disk uh, and then I might try with the game, I'll perhaps pick Ghosts and Goblins or something, set that as the image for the SD to IEC, load the software. Um, select dev uh, device 9 as the source and then 8 as the destination uh, and see if we can program a game to it and I'll, I'll play a game. Well I've been tearing my hair out again. Um, after a while there, um, it wasn't formatting the disc again um, and I think it's the disc, if I show you the disc, I took the disc out um, if you look, um, and it starts down here, I think you've got like track zero down here can you see, it's like a groove almost carved into it um, and I think that was in part those uh, the particles I mentioned um, that I couldn't um, they wouldn't come off with cotton buds, and they were very 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 small. Um, but yeah, so you know if you look at the other side, like I say the other side, look at that. That's what, how it should look, nice and smooth. 
but you've got ridges you know carved into that side there um, I hope that is coming out well um, might be an idea for you to side on can you see there you, if I flip it this way up and stick it in I can load the directory um, and I'll show you I'll just reload this game I'll switch this off switch it back on uh, well uh, fast load I'll do load directory and you'll see that'll come back pretty quick I think there we go so there's the directory of everything that's on that disk um, so if we just load the first things on there which I think is going to be is the menu it's one of those free cover disks this uh, Acor 1 you'll see hopefully we should load searching loading decompressing straight into the menu um, and this is another thing that confused me for a little bit if I say use G um, which is the last ball same for any of these it loads it and it tries to run it as you'll see loading you've got the loading bit then run type mismatch you just type run and it's actually all right it's the same with all the programs on this disk they all load fine um, now I can't save a file to this disk it says it's write protected now I'm guessing that must be a software write protection feature because there's no you know the there's no uh, hole there you know for the sensor so I can't write to this side of the disk but the other side of the disk like I say is just knackered I cannot format it at all so the only unknown at this stage is whether I have write capability um, but every file on this I mean that's that one loaded let's switch it off I'll load this the other one I think it's called snowball or something let's load that see what happens yeah there we go decompressing uh, Snowball Sunday, let's try that. H. And you'll see, and it takes longer, um, surprisingly long actually. And for a minute, when I originally loaded this, I thought it had failed, but I watched the head for a bit and eventually realised, yeah, it did move you know, tracks. Um, and then eventually it shifts right to one of the upper tracks, and does a seat right to one of the upper tracks on the disc, and then it, it's loaded. Um, so it's probably going to be another 30 to 60 seconds, yeah, I think at least might cut part of this load in if it's uh, taking a while. Same thing you see, this much error, so I don't know if that's a problem with their menu or what, but you click run, type run rather. And as you can see that's working. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, it's always worth having more than one disc. <laughs> this is my problem, I've, I've got a load of the five and a quarter discs, they're all in storage and I can't be bothered going looking for them. Um, in the meantime I've ordered some more discs so uh, you know an original um, pr you know uh, printed not really printed but you know an original manufactured game so we'll ch check those out when that arrives it might be a part two um, one other thing that I just want to point out as well um, whilst I was having problems with the formatting um, a few minutes ago um, you know prior to me flipping the disc over and realizing it's probably the disc that's knackered um, if I just lift this up, and I'll see if I can, I might try and get a macro shot of this actually. In fact, let me put it on macro. Right, so we're in super macro mode now, so hopefully I should be able to get pretty close. Um, could be quite hard to do this actually. Just try and move around a little bit. Um, if you look at the, God, where has the head gone? I can't even see the damn thing. Um, if you look at the head now, and I'll try and get this in varying light conditions so you can actually see the surface of it here as I rotate it a little bit. Can you see there's not a mark on it um, and it's very hard to even show you this way um, I'll just see if I can get even closer with my magnifier I'm not sure how well this is this is going to work if at all no, it's not going to do is it I don't think but yeah the all around that you see the black part the black sort of cross shape um, in the right light you could see very small particles on the very edges and with isoprop they were not coming off just very 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 very, very small particles and with cotton buds you know even using a tiny piece of kitchen roll I you know rubbed that area quite a lot and I couldn't get them off and it's nice and shiny you know the whole area is very smooth there's no damage to it there's no marks but the little black nicks that were there they were they were like little particles on the very edges uh, of that cross at the top top part the bottom part um, they wouldn't come off at all and what I ended up using was Meguiar's Plastex on a cotton bud just wiped it very gently um, wiped it with isoprop inspected it and gone um, but I tried everything to clean it up before that so as, uh, as silly as it sounds if you want to get one of these super 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 clean and make sure there's no particles of anything on there isoprop on its own is not enough um, 
something like Maguire's plastics is what you need, which is really bizarre, it's unorthodox, but it's done the trick. That head is like brand new now. At the end of the day, it looks like it was, you know, the heads were not only clogged, um, then it needed demagnetizing. That was the key, really, until I demagnetized it, it was just nothing. It wasn't doing anything whatsoever. Um, and then finally, really, it's uh, it's just you know just a general clean up and stuff. There's nothing really wrong with this drive. It's amazing, really. So I pretty much reassembled now. I uh, swapped out the cap I had on the underside of the board uh, and put the shielding back on. Got all the screws and things back in place. All the connectors on. Uh, it's worth marking these with a little red mark or something so you know which one's pin one before you take them off. Um, yeah, it's all being lubricated and cleaned up and stuff, so I'll just get the lid back on and uh, show you the end result. So as you can see, all reassembled, and if I point with the TV, you'll see I've just loaded the last ball. Um, and when you get this thing where it's as tight this match error, that's because I'm using the fast loader. I tested before without the fast load, and obviously it's a lot slower. It takes forever, you know, like two minutes to load this, this particular game, where this game takes about ten seconds if you use the fast loader. Uh, so there's a lot to be said for the fast loaders on the C64. Anyway, I thought you'd find that interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.